start off my speech with a case that you all said you were familiar with, but some of, some of you said that you weren't sure what the charges were against the children from Shenandoah. So this is a video saying about all the charges they were acquitted against. Of deliberations. And now people living in the town of Shenandoah, Schuylkill County, are wondering what kind of impact the verdict will have on their already divided community. WFMZ's Jocelyn Lopes has that story. This Schuylkill County community looks peaceful from afar, but the beating death of 25-year-old Luis Ramirez last summer exposed long-simmering racial tensions here. Now many in Shenandoah are further divided by Friday's verdict. People are mad and people ain't mad. 17-year-old Brandon Bukarski and 19-year-old Derek Donchak were acquitted of the most serious charges against them. Everybody's feelings is, like I say, I can't believe it. The jury is going for triple assault, and it's triple assault. Many in the community are raising concerns. What's going to happen? Is there going to be a war over here? But some say it's been surprisingly quiet since the jury's decision was handed down. Everybody's just getting tired of it, so they're, they're calming, it's calming down now. It's over. Ramirez's death put Shenandoah in the national spotlight. Now many are hoping the spotlight goes dim and the community recovers. It's hard to say, but uh, you know, we can work things out, you know what I mean? It will always be, there's always good and bad. As the scars continue to heal, the Mexican-American Legal Defense Fund is looking to see if the death of Luis Ramirez was a hate crime. Jocelyn Mose, 69 News. Now this was a trial where two of them were juveniles and one I went to school with. He was 18 years old when this happened. According to Justia, the fastest growing group of criminals is juveniles. I believe this is because they get lesser sentences, so it's more tempting to actually commit these crimes. I know that most people say it depends on the severity of the crime, but as you see here, it really doesn't. I've seen it work many different ways. Um, I believe it's a horrible way to teach minors how to act when you give them a lesser sentence just because they're a juvenile. In a society obsessed with equality, I believe it's a, hypocrit a hypocritical standard to lessen someone's sentence just due to their age. Um, according to your surveys, you were aware of this trial. That's why I chose it as a wonderful example to prove that if you don't punish a child severely enough, these are the kinds of things that can happen. As I said, I went to school with these children. I've seen them get away with numerous things. They've passed classes because they were on the football team and they couldn't get on academic probation. They harassed my cousin because of her weight constantly. Nothing was ever done about it. I believe that juveniles should be charged as adults so they will actually fear the punishment and be less likely to commit it or it will be a less severe sentence or a less severe crime rather than actually murdering or injuring someone. And they will think more before making bad decisions. Um, delinquents need these harsher punishments in order to learn wrong from right, to save innocent victims, and to decrease the high amount of juvenile crime that we see today. When we're younger, parents teach us wrong from right. They give us rewards and punishment. Without this reward or punishment, there would be no such thing as taboo, immoral, or unacceptable acts. Um, punishments are supposed to teach us society's expectations, and they show us how to coexist with other people no matter what the differences are. Um, why would we want to become another statistic with a rap sheet, just as many others have? Um, in the older times, people were hung for their crimes just to prove to a society that this is what's going to happen to you, and in fact, most crime was reduced because of this. The younger children are very influential, and if they see these juveniles getting away with things, they're more likely to do it. The minors might start doing the crimes too, and as you said, you all knew minors and talked to them on a weekly basis, they would be more likely to start committing crimes, and I don't think you would want to see any of them get into trouble. Um, these boys in this trial believe that they were invincible. They never had any actual punishments. They were rewarded for every stupid thing they've done. Um, they got to get out of classes for charities that they didn't even really care about. Um, you could ask anyone with my viewpoint, and I honestly wasn't surprised at the trial. My only question is, if this is what it comes to, what, what comes next? If they only get six months for murder, what's their next crime going to be? Who is the next victim? It could be any of us. The juveniles know what they do is wrong because they come up with defenses to make up for what they've done and to get themselves out of trouble. If, the, if they were severely punished, the minors would be less likely to commit their crimes. I'm not saying 
that all minors would stop, but it'd be a large decrease. According to the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, there was 1.7 million juvenile cases in 2005. This is a very high number that I would like to see decrease. I believe that if the minors that are still willing to commit the crimes are mature enough to, they're mature enough to deal with the life-altering decisions, or the life-altering consequences that go with their decisions. Um, I also understand that the minors get lesser sentences, and sometimes it even comes clean from the record. I believe this is wrong, it's a horrible way to teach them, because when they get older, that's not going to happen. Um, these benefits then become a reality when the minors understand that they can get away with anything they want. Um, the centers and prisons are over full, and it keeps increasing. This is a really bad thing, and if things keep going the way they are, it's just going to constantly keep increasing and increasing. I know that in the long run, if we have them for longer sentences, it'll pay more of our tax dollars, but in the, sh or in the short run, I'm sorry. In the long run, it'll help us save money because less of them would be likely to do crimes that would actually put them in jail. These boys are now in Schuylkill County Prison in Pottsville. They're living off our tax dollars because they committed a crime like this. After waiting six months, they're more likely to commit another crime like this and live off our tax dollars again. Um, as we know, these egotistical kids need some victims to prey on. And Luis Ramirez, was one of these victims. I believe everyone deserves the right of safety, that they don't walk down the street and have this happen to them. I believe that if the courts at least put forth some effort, this is less likely to happen to any of us. According to the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, 17% of juveniles attack in groups. That's what happened to Luis Ramirez. Now his children must live without a father because teens have nothing to better, better to do one night than get drunk and beat about a day. Everyone deserves the life, and I'm not preaching about who the victim is. I don't care if he was illegal. I'm saying it can happen to any of us. It can happen to anyone in this room. It can happen to our parents, the minors that we knew, anyone. Usually, juveniles would pick someone that they can push around as these teens did, anyone who wasn't willing to fight back, which usually, in most cases, ends up being other juveniles. Um, they're usually their own age, and they'll pick anyone who's in the wrong place at the wrong time. So anyone is actually, no one's really mean. If they live the experience of what the adult criminals do, they're less likely to resort to this crime and it'll be less serious. The Shenandoah murder trial has taught me a valuable lesson in punishment. These children were tried as, adult, or tried as juveniles in school, so they constantly believed that they could get away with anything. And I'm not surprised at, again, what they got away with now. As I said, they used to pass all their classes just because they're on the football team and they used to make racial remarks to my ex-boyfriend, who's now my good friend, and if they were adult enough and strong and mature enough to actually commit the crime, they're strong and mature enough to deal with their prison sentence. And I believe that if we put harsher punishments on the juveniles, it'll save countless number of people. It will decrease the amount of crimes, as I said, it was 1.7 million in 2005, and it'll teach youth how to behave. They need a firm hand to punish them. Thank you.